From Canadian Food Focus, this is Ask a Farmer. I'm your host, Clinton Monchuk, a Saskatchewan farmer. In this podcast, we talk to food experts to answer your questions about your food. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast today. We have Tiffany Martinka, who is a chicken farmer. Uh, from the northeastern part of Saskatchewan. Now, we like to learn a little bit more about how your food is being grown here in this great country. And sometimes we don't really know when it comes to the grocery store, when we're buying that uh, chicken breast, chicken thighs, or chicken wings, which we'll talk about later on, um, how necessarily that's actually grown. And and, uh, we have the privilege today of listening to a chicken farmer and uh, understanding a little bit more about how that chicken is raised. So, Tiffany, do you want to give us a little bit of an overview of kind of who you are and uh, maybe some history of your family farm and just what you farm in general? Myself and my husband and as well as family, we all grain farm and also run a broiler chicken operation here in the northeast of Saskatchewan. Um, I knew I wanted to take uh, agriculture um, as a secondary education because we need everybody needs agriculture every day we all eat every day and I knew that I knew that we needed it all over the world as well so it was something that I really wanted to be part of and when I met my husband in university we talked about the goals and the opportunities and and what we wanted uh, for a future and we saw that future right here on the family farm so we actually rolled into his father's third of the farm when his father was ready to retire. There was another uncle he was farming with and he retired. So that has actually left us farming with another aunt and uncle. So that is our current situation on our family farm. Um, We're we're very um, lucky in the sense that we get to farm alongside family. We, We don't actually have any outside employees at this point in time anyways. Um, it's all family owned and operated. So we run um, some grain land as well as our broiler chicken operation. And I can't forget to mention, I also have a small flock of sheep. Um, that's a story for another day, but they are they are a little special part of our lives for sure. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see the, the, the family and, and the sheep and the birds and the grain farm all kind of running together. Yeah, it comes together and is is a nice mix for us, for sure. So one of the things that we can see just just with society in general, we're we're moving more towards cities. There's less and less people living in rural areas, and that connection between you know how your food is being raised and and you know the farmers who are producing it, it's it's becoming a little bit more stretched. I see you're on social media, and in fact, we have a great video on Canadian Food Focus that kind of highlights you walking through the barn and going through the the um, process of of you know getting the the barn prepared and and growing the birds. But I think sometimes people don't you know take the time to appreciate what goes into actually raising raising birds uh, for meat on on farms. Maybe give all the listeners out there just an overview of how this works on your farm so we can give a, a good picture of, of what it looks like on, on Martinka. And it's Martinka Chicks, right? Yeah, yeah, Martinka Chicks yeah, for sure. Yeah. So to give a little bit of context, our farm is one of 68 farms in all of Saskatchewan for broiler chicken farms. It's so special to be a chicken farm. Not that, you know, there really isn't a lot of us out there. And I believe the number is 2,800 in all of Canada for broiler chicken farms. Um, so because of this, we, we take what we do really seriously. Um, I, I grew up on a grain and cattle farm. And when I married into this operation, I was so fascinated by how the broiler chicken farm operated and how efficient it was. And it just, it still amazes me to this day how how we can uh, bring everything full production to the restaurants, the grocery stores, to the kitchen table. 
During the video that you took, and, and like I mentioned before, it's on CanadianFoodFocus.org or, or the YouTube channel as well. Um, but you mentioned the biosecurity and you do the farm tour with the video because we can't really go into the barn. Do, do you want to just explain a little bit why that biosecurity exists and and why somebody like me can't just willy-nilly go into your barn? Yeah, we we would love to have people come in and tour our barns firsthand to you know smell the chickens feel the straw (laughs) (laughs) smell the manure yeah (laughs) hear hear them chirping i would love for that to happen firsthand but uh, because of our biosecurity we cannot do that especially at this point in time so biosecurity means that um, we are trying to keep our chickens safe from any sort of disease or infections or whatnot that may enter the barn, um, just keep them healthy and and thriving, essentially. Um, So in order to put some of our biosecurity protocols in place, we can't wear our street clothes, our street shoes into the barns. So as soon as we're walking into the barns, there's there's like even a yellow line drawn on our floor part of the auditing process nothing crosses over that line once you cross that line we have barn clothes barn shoes that are changed into and that is what we wear in and amongst the chickens so we we don't track any sort of uh, illness into the barn and one of the most popular um, uh, illnesses right now that you might hear about is avian influenza Uh, I know People probably hear it all over the radio right now in the media. And it, it really, truly is a, a huge risk to um, chicken farmers and, and our chicken industry and essentially our, our food supply in Canada here. Uh, so we take that very seriously. And, and you know, because of that, we, we do not allow tours on our farm. So the next best thing is to do those virtual tours. Do the video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which was great. So you've mentioned broiler chickens, and and obviously there's different types of chickens out there. Do you want to explain, you know, what the difference is between broilers and layers? Okay, so I like this question a lot because I like to compare it back to cattle. There are dairy cattle uh, are for milk and milk products. Beef cattle are for um, producing meat. And that's like what broiler chicks are. They're they're for producing meat. Um, There are specific breeds that are for laying. Laying eggs are table eggs. And broiler chicks, our breed of chickens, is specifically grown. They're specifically bred and their genetics are there to grow the best meat possible and to grow efficiently as possible as well. And a fun fact of our farm, there is never a single egg laid in our farm. Uh, We raise our broiler chicks for 34 days and we are asked to raise them to 2.32 kg within those days. We have two barns. They are 60 feet wide by 470 feet long and there's two of them that size and the barns are filled with straw, the feed bins are full of feed and the chicks arrive. They are all less than 24 hours old and we are placing uh, just shy of 90,000 chicks in our, in our barns. Uh, so roughly 45,000 in each barn. And that number can change a little bit depending on what we are asked to, the weight we're asked to raise our chickens to. And that's because if we're growing a bigger bird, we place less chicks. If we're raising a smaller bird, we can place more chicks. And that's because there's regulations in place for how densely our barns can be populated. Just again, for some context. um, So what do you do when you said the birds were going to be coming and placed? Like, what does that mean? What do you do beforehand? Yeah. And what do you do beforehand to get ready for the birds? So to get the barns ready, we are, we're spreading straw and to spread straw, we have these great big round bales. They are put in our bale processor, which shreds the straw and spreads it evenly all throughout our barns. And even before that straw is placed, we we have um, the barns are pressure washed clean. Like everything is very clean, disinfected. 
um, to prepare for these new little chicks to come. And then when the chicks arrive, they're all less than 24 hours old, probably even less than 12 hours old, I bet. And we're placing approximately 45,000 chicks in each barn. And then we have feed lines that run the full length of the barn as well as water lines so that there's 24 hours access to, for those chicks. And at the beginning, they are so small, they only take up, like we only give them half the barn at first. One of the reasons that we only give the new chicks half length of our barn is because that they always flock together. They want to be together. They don't necessarily spread out and they're, they're like that all the time. So that is one of the reasons why we keep, keep the barn at half length. They can all be together. And then as they grow and need a little more room, we can open up the bar barn to the full length. So I'm trying to draw a, a visualization of this. So, so when you say the, those birds are placed and they're kind of in half the barn, like, is it completely open or I'm just trying to, to get a better sense of, of what that looks like in the barn. Yeah. The barn is completely open. The only thing in their way is the feed and water lines hanging down. So I think, I think a common misconception is that our chickens are in cages. When it comes to broiler chicks, uh, chickens for meat, um, they, they are not in cages. They are free run and every broiler farm across Canada is free run. So free run means they have free run of the barn and there, there's no cages at all. So you have all these little chicks running around there in the barn, um, but they grow. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like they're not going to stay the same size of the palm of your hand. Right. They're going to grow. Yeah. So how, like, how does that work? How did like do do the feeders move? Do the like, how does that all work? Yeah. So the barn is designed to accommodate the chickens as they grow. The feed lines are on a pulley system up to the ceiling. So as they grow, we have these like feed pans and a little auger system that runs all the way down the barn and it it augers out feeds 24 hours a day into the feed pans. And then this line can be lifted up as the chickens grow. Same with the water lines. There's like a little water nipple that they kind of peck at to get the water out. So that runs the length of the barn and can be raised up as well as these chickens grow. Because yeah, you're right. The difference between the yeah. difference in size is incredible from the chick to the 34 day old chicken whenever they want it's it's like a buffet of of feed and and water um but but how do you know what to feed them yeah my my father-in-law who who i credit to starting our chicken farm he he always says our chickens eat better than we do because we work with a feed nutritionist who would be similar to like one of our dietitians right um so we work with a feed nutritionist and they tell us exactly what the chickens need for energy, for protein, for their supplements, their um, vitamins and minerals that they need in their feed. And they're getting exactly what they need. And to give you an example of how important these um, feed nutritionists can be, we were working with one company a few years ago and we switched over to a new company and just the small little changes that they made in the feed, uh, we were able to shave an entire day off our production cycle. So we went from 35 days to 34 days. And that was just due to the sm few small changes that they made. So it, it, it does make such a big difference with, um, with knowing exactly what you're feeding them. Awesome. So, so, and you said they grow roughly about 34 days. Uh, so then where do they go from there? So, so 34 days, they are ready to go to be processed and made into our favorite chicken products, chicken wings, Kentucky fried chicken, um, whatever that may be. Um, so different farms are contracted with different, uh, processing companies for us on our farm. We're contracted with Lilydale. Um, which is out of Winyard. So our chickens go to Winyard. Um, other farms may be contracted with Prairie Pride and they go to Saskatoon. Um, it just all depends on the farm. Um, so they're picked up by a crew called Chicken Pickers. 
So we have a crew come in and they actually come in at nighttime, which is really interesting because that's when the chickens sit really still at night and the barns are kept really dark. Um, like, they they work with flashlights to pick the chickens because the chickens aren't running around then. We don't want them to run around and injure themselves or just be stressed. So they sit really nice and quiet and the chicken pickers come in at night and they are all handled with care and loaded into a semi truck. And the unit that they're loaded into kind of imagine it kind of like a dresser, like a crate. They're all crates with holes so that there's a lot of airflow but it's almost like a dresser with drawers and the chickens are kind of put in drawers and then it's loaded up into the semi truck and they are taken off to Winyard to be processed so that's the the overview and i assume there's lots of like how does technology kind of play into that and and i think in your video you kind of highlight some of the um you know the sensor technology and the computers but you want to just touch on a little bit about that of how things are controlled within the barn? Yeah. So when you have animals, you're, you're essentially on 24 seven call because it's our job to make sure that they are thriving and well taken care of and that there's no issues. So all of the feed sensors, water lines are all connected to, to a computer system. And if, for example, um, maybe a feed bin runs empty or the auger system isn't working properly, it all is connected to that computer system and goes to a phone app with all the information right on there. So it is my husband who has the app on his phone. So sometimes at three in the morning, he can get a phone call saying, there's an issue in the barn. You need to come out and check and see what's going on. So sometimes he needs to go out there and, and do that. Or maybe we can, we're we in the city running errands in, in town and he can always keep an eye on things that way. And maybe it's getting too hot in the summer or um, in the wintertime, there can be things that freeze up and all those systems alert us to all of that. And then there's um, the other side of the technology as well, where it helps us know what's going into our chickens too. So the systems are weighing and measuring everything they're eating, everything they're drinking. There's this little weigh scale inside that every time a chicken hops on and off, um, it, it weighs them and it tracks that too. So that's really neat to see um, how they're gaining their weight and growing every day. So there's 34, 35 days that you grow the bird. But then you already mentioned that you have to clean out the barn and there's pressure washing that takes place and disinfecting that takes place. So how does that actually work? Like, do, do you put the birds back in right away or, or what do you got to do? Uh, how does that work? To give you an overview, there are eight week cycles. So chickens are in the barn for roughly um, six of those we are less less than six weeks I guess five weeks <laughs> and it yeah. can vary it can vary farm to farm right everybody right. goes yeah. a, you know a few days different so roughly five to six weeks they're in the barn and then two weeks the barns are empty that's when they're all clean disinfected and getting ready for the next flock and then we do that about six or seven times a year so right. okay. eight week cycles six to seven times and just out of curiosity like when when you do that every eight weeks, then that has the ability to adjust your production too, right? So every every eight week cycle, it's not necessarily the same amount of birds, is it? Yeah, because ultimately, like what we're growing is what the consumer has asked for. So because it's every eight weeks, we can adjust like based on seasons. So barbecue season might be different than Christmas with what consumers are asking for. And the weights of our chicken can be adjusted to what the consumer is asking for at the grocery store. So we really have that ability to quickly adjust. And, you know, a great example was when we all lived through COVID and, grow, you know, restaurants were shutting down. Nobody was going for wings at the bar anymore. Um, 
we were able to quickly adjust in, within our industry to what the consumer was actually taking home with them. So uh, now you touched on it before that you also have a, a grain farm portion to um, the the broiler chicken side of things, and and then obviously the the sheep there that are there, um, but. You want to talk mm-hmm. about how you kind of use one to benefit the other and, and how that works on, on your farm. I love how our farm goes full, full circle and I love telling this story. So we have approximately 2,000 acres of grain land and the cereals that we grow there, um, barley in particular, Hollis barley is what we feed to our chickens. Um, so it makes up a portion of their diet. So we're able to plant our crops harvest our Hollis barley, we keep it to feed to our chickens. And then as we clean out our barns after every flock cycle, um, that manure is then spread on our fields and we are able to cut our fertilizer requirements by as much as half. Wow. And and you know, the other thing to note too is uh, when that grain is harvested, it leaves the straw behind. That straw is baled up. And that is what we use in our barns oh. for bedding as well. So I, it really works well going both ways. Um, it's, it's really nice to be able to take everything full circle on our farm. That is interesting. And, and I just think of, you know, the, in the last however many years, the price of uh, fertilizer has gone up quite a bit. So it's interesting that, you know, you're, you have the ability to save some of that and, and you're really tr- just integrating all these different steps of the farm to be more s- sustainable, I guess. It's- you know, our neighbor farmers are always asking us, hey, can we get our hands on some of that chicken manure? But we're like, no, <laughs> sorry, it's taken. Um, but one of the recent projects that we um, have integrated is we, we've, just, um, we've just put together a solar panel system on our farm here. So we are hoping to um, generate enough uh, solar energy to power our barns and our, our farm. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And I, and I would assume like there's a lot of moving parts, right? You have the, the feeders and everything and the computer systems. So that would power the entire, both of the barns with the solar energy. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is excellent. our ho- that is our hopes. There's a few little roadblocks we're trying to overcome at the moment, <laughs> as always. It seems to be on the farm, and nothing yeah. nothing comes super easy. There's always something that comes up. So that is our hope, and that is our goal. Awesome, that's great to hear. So this kind of gets us to the fun farm fact for the podcast, and uh, today's fun farm fact is: Did you know that the highest consumption of chicken wings is actually during Super Bowl Sunday? And in fact, last year during the Super Bowl, which was the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles, Canadians consumed 76 million chicken wings for the game. This was from the Chicken Farmers of Canada. And I was trying to do some math in my head on this, on on (laughs) 76 million chicken wings. So roughly speaking, that's two chicken wings per person here in this country on Super Bowl Sunday. And I know for a fact, because we're a big football family in, in my family, um, but my family definitely did their fair take of <laughs> consumption of chicken wings on, on that day and, and possibly other, other beverages as well. So. What's, what's your favorite flavor of chicken wings? Ooh, that's a good one. I, I always get uh, buffalo chicken wings, always. I like a little spice. How about you? Okay, I have to bring this up because I think it's unique to my little small town. Have you ever heard of Granch? 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 Wings? Yeah. I've heard of the Granch, but not Granch. Okay, these are my favorite kind of chicken wings. And Granch is Greek ranch. Greek, Greek and ranch. Ranch. Wings. Chicken wings. They're so good. There's wow. also a version called Gruffalo, which is... Um, <laughs> Gruffalo. <laughs> when was that? Uh, Greek and Buffalo, I think. Something like Greek that. And buffalo, gruffalo. I love that. That's funny. <laughs> when you're in the, the protein section of a grocery store, you have tons of different choices, right? So you have you have beef, you have pork, you have 
chicken, you have plant-based products, you have all these different things. But one of the things that I think is is kind of unique is that we all seem to have different you know, programs that we follow. And I notice on the chicken packages, especially when I buy the tree pack chicken breasts or wings or whatever, it's got a little red chicken. What does that mean? All Canadian chicken farms, we are all regulated and we all follow. A, um, there's three different programs and we are audited for these programs, third party audited. And so what those programs are, they include the on-farm food safety, the animal care program, as well as the sustainability program. So we have um, strict guidelines that we have to adhere to and follow, and we're just really able to set the bar high by following those standards. And that's, that's all Canadian chicken that follows these standards. So, so when you say all Canadian chicken, so, so every farm then in this country is kind of has the same audit process and the same program that you have to follow. Is, is that correct? Every broiler chicken farm that is quota owned and operated, we all follow the same set of standards across, across the country. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. That kind of gives a little bit of assurance that, you know, it's similar if you're buying chicken in Saskatchewan or buying chicken in Ontario. It's, it's going to be held to the same standard. You know, we know that Canadians want to eat Canadian chicken. So also with that, um, with the quota system, we can ensure that's happening as well. There's very little um, chicken that is imported into Canada. Most of it's coming from the farms that are within your province. If you're buying the fresh raw chicken breast at your grocery store, there's a very high likelihood that it that is coming from a chicken farm within your province. So it's it's a really neat system that is set up in that way. We we kind of touched on going to the grocery store and, and looking at the different uh, things that are there and, and searching for that uh, red chicken. Now, the system here in Canada is slightly different than what it would be on the, the southern side of the border. And, and I think there's sometimes some general questions that come like, how is it different, right? You might hear about it a little bit in the news. And and I know prices, especially here in the last little bit with food inflation, um, have come up. But what really, what is the difference between the systems, uh, be, between, say, Canada and, and some of the other countries when it comes to chicken production? Mm -hmm. I think we can get lumped together a lot of times or or people see the media articles pop up or or you know on social media they'll see various things pop up and and a lot of it is um maybe in regards to the US agriculture but we are we are different here and part of that is with with chicken we are supply managed so supply managed also think your dairy products your table eggs turkeys those are supply managed industries and what that means is the demand in Canada is matched to what chicken farmers are supplying in Canada. And there's just, there's rules and regulations placed around what's imported into Canada and, and exported as well. Um, so that we can be guaranteeing that the majority of chicken that Canadian consumers are buying is coming from Canadian farmers. One really neat thing about our industry is that it's designed so that the fresh raw chicken breast you're buying in your grocery store should be coming from chicken farms that are within your pro province that are closest to you. So we are able to provide you with the freshest chicken possible because of the way it, it, it is designed. So that's a really neat piece. Um, I think that is special and unique to Canada. And because of that, we're, we're able to ensure that I, th you know what? I personally think that we grow the best chicken in the world here in Canada. You do. I've tasted it before. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, we uh, thank you very much for being a part of the podcast, Tiffany. And, and uh, as mentioned, uh, anybody who's listening can watch more of Tiffany's video on our services on YouTube or just go to our website and do a search. So. Thank you very much for being a part, or part of the podcast, and uh, we wish you all the best. 
I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to our Ask a Farmer podcast. We at Canadian Food Focus value the input from our listeners and ask that you share this podcast with your friends and family. Remember, this is a two-way street, so we seek your input for future segments that are of interest to you about food and farming. To do this, please click on the Ask Us icon at the top of our website, canadianfoodfocus.org. While you're there, feel free to follow our numerous social media links and sign up for our newsletter. This segment was produced and edited by Angela Larson, research and writing by Dorothy Long and Penny Eaton, music by Andy Elson. I'm your host, Clinton Monchuk, and from all of us here at Canadian Food Focus, we wish you good health and great eats. Thank you.